This is Dan Dix here reporting for Press for Truth. And there is no doubt right now, ladies and gentlemen, that we are living in tough times. I mean, the cost of food, for example, just keeps going up and up. And at the same time, the Bank of Canada has hiked interest rates by 350 basis points in just seven months in their attempt to force inflation back to their 2% target. Now, this has a lot of people feeling uh, the crunch right now. But having said that, at the same time, there's a lot of people who saw this coming from a mile away. And they made all the right moves to protect their assets by taking their money out of the dollar and by moving it into things like a little bit of cryptocurrency and then the precious metal space like gold and silver and viewers of this channel will know this is a space i've been very interested in for many years especially in troubling times like we are in right now so joining me on the line right now to talk about all of this and much more uh, is jose vasquera he is the chairman of silver mountain resources uh, agmr.ca is the website jose thank you so much for joining us here uh, once again on Press for Truth to talk about all this. Now, I wanted to start with uh, the inflation issue. I mean, to me, I don't really see this showing any kinds of signs of slowing right now. Um, do you think we're still potentially in an area that could lead into hyperinflation? And maybe could this possibly even lead to a, a something like a global recession? I think we're closer to lead to a recession than, than uh, more into <clears throat> a hyperinflation. I think the Bank of Canada, as well as the Fed, is trying to do everything that it is in their hands to essentially, you know, retract the inflation. Reason why they have been uh, hiking the interest rates in in both sides, in Canada and in the states. But what that will create is a uh, is a retraction in the economy, which will be provo provoking a, a, a recession. And I don't see any reason why we would not see that. Um, and the reality is that it almost seems that they are trying to push as much as they can everyone and then they're going to ease it and uh, that will create uh, the perfect storm for precious metals in a sense. No? Well, speaking of a perfect storm, on top of all of this, we also now have Putin essentially announcing that they're going to attempt to set up a global reserve currency that may even rival the dollar. I mean, I think he's got China and India and Brazil maybe even Saudi Arabia involved. So, you know, if this happens, if we do have a new global reserve currency coming from the likes of Putin, could that potentially do something like crash the dollar? It could. Um, I don't think that will have too much uh, support, to be sincere, because I think the rest of the world will, will be collapsing if that is the case. Uh, but nevertheless, I mean, we cannot assume that Putin is an improvised person because he is not. All what he has been doing with regards to oil and gas, especially with Europe, has been very well thought. In fact, if we think about that, I mean, his thesis on his uh, PhD was with regards to that in particular. So he has been thinking about this for many years. Uh, but from there to set up a new currency, uh, I don't think that will be, uh, you know, taken by, by, by the majority of the world. So, Yeah. Well, when it comes to governments just essentially debasing uh, fiat currency, let's talk a little bit about silver. I mean, in this current climate, I mean, how important is owning silver, do you think, when we're talking about this, you know, potential hyperinflation, global recession, dollar crash? Well, precious metals has always been both gold and silver, a very good hedge towards uh, currency, towards inflation, towards uh the diva call of the world, in a sense. So uh, you would always want it to have uh, gold and silver. The beauty of silver today is that silver is not only a refuge, uh, as it has always been for a currency, but now silver has the value on becoming extremely important from an electric vehicle standpoint of view, from a green metal standpoint of view, that the world is moving towards that dimension, uh, we, we see silver being used in uh, solar panels, in electric vehicles, in batteries, in a lot of uh, uses with regards to the medicine uh, or, or the medical devices. <clears throat> so I, what, what I see now is that silver now has sort of a double uh, hype, something that we didn't see before. So 
And we did see an increase of the silver prices in the different uh, moments of difficulties in the economy in the 1930s, in the 1960s, in the 1980s, in the 2000, 2009. And now it's repeated with a pandemic, the unfortunate pandemic, and I think will be repeated again. And the, the important thing of all this is that, you know, there, there is a pattern that always happens, which is increase in the interest rates, increase in value for gold and silver. Uh, and, and then they, they usually come down once the government start uh, applying easing. So when they start printing money and, uh, and, and this I don't think will be the exception. Is there anything right now that's making silver a little more attractive than gold? Because, I mean, you mentioned some of the applications, and that's interesting because I know gold has a few applications out there that where it can be used in the real world, but it seems like silver has many, <clears throat> many, many more applications than gold. Am I right? Well, there is a commitment by the world to essentially move to, towards uh, a more environmentally friendly uh, world in general. It's not only electric vehicles, it's not only solar uh, energy, it's not only wind energy, and we're moving towards uh, the decrease in use of oil and gas. I mean, that's in, 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 in general what is happening. Uh, we have seen 3.5 million vehicles sold from an electric standpoint of view. It is expected by 2030 to have 300 vehicles being used we have to understand that we use between one ounce to two ounces in every single vehicle that has been built. Uh, and and uh, <clears throat> that will put uh, silver into a very interesting situation because there is going to be an over demand for a supply that is limited. And we have not seen that yet, which will be very interesting to see. We have seen those sort of things with copper, uh, but we haven't seen it with silver. And I think that's about to happen, irrespectively of what will happen with regards to uh, a, a refuge, like, as I was mentioning, every time that there is uh, a very big change in the economy, you know, we tend to go to gold and silver because we know that that is a way to store value, mm -hmm. uh, fundamental value, like physical value. You know, if, if, if something gets uh, out of control, uh, what will matter is what you have in terms of, you know, physical value, and that yeah. will be covered by gold and silver. No? Well, gold and silver, especially silver, have already proven to be very, very resilient, even over just the past past few years of these uh, crazy uh, markets. So uh, how bullish are you on silver uh, moving forward? Extremely bullish, extremely bullish. Again, uh, because I believe that it will be a great refuge for, uh, uh, for, for a very unstable economy. I think that we are not putting into consideration yet what we will see with regards to oil and gas and what will be uh, happening in Europe in particular as we speak. I mean, right now, uh, oil prices or even energy prices in, uh, in Europe are already doubling. So what we will see is something, uh, I think that it will be out of context. So yeah, I'm going to push. You're, you're the chairman of Silver Mountain Resources, and it, it looks like you guys focus exclusively uh, on on silver essentially is you know why why did you decide to go you know focus so much on silver over gold well again we see the future of silver not only as a refuge but also on the environmental side of things like we see this as a true green metal and we believe that the place where we have it and where we will continue to increase our resources and put the mine into production is a place where, you know, Peru and Mexico has been number one, number two in the world forever in terms of uh, silver production. So it was the right place to be at the right moment. And we believe we will be timing it, timing it uh, very nicely. Well, speaking of that, um, moving forward, do you have a, a a business plan for the rest of 2022, or at least for uh, for 2023? What's your plans for for next year? In other words, yeah. So we have been converting the resources that we had in historical resources. So we're moving essentially a resource that we already know exists there, and we have been drilling uh, between holes. So essentially, we are going to move it into what we call the 43101, and once that is ready. We're just going to move the project towards production. We are right now working on that conversion uh, as we are working on showing more potential around where we are. 
uh, remember, we have the luxury of having an old mine. So the permits are in place. The plant is there and has to be just essentially uh, revamped and then begin production uh, in an area where we are where we are going to be mining high grade silver it's, it's around 14 ounces uh, equivalent silver so we're talking about something really significant here yeah you guys are positioned very well and as we said in the beginning of this interview in a time that is very very timely especially considering all the things that are happening in the world right now and you know i get a lot of viewers contacting me emailing me all the time saying, Dan, how do I, you know, sort of, uh, you know, uh, get, get involved in this space like you have, protecting my assets moving forward, especially if hyperinflation continues to happen, if global reception continues to happen, if the dollar starts to crash. So um, this is why I like to uh, to talk to, uh, you know, people like you to be able to help explain this to them. So where where would you say is a good place to go right now online? Like what, what are the uh, ticker symbols and uh, where's the best place to go for people to, to learn from you? Uh, www.silvermountainresources.com uh, uh, You can Google us through AGMR, uh, which stands for Silver and uh, Mountain Resources. <clears throat> so you will find all the information that, that you need. Uh, and certainly I invite you to follow us because this is a very unique story. Again, it's a story where there is a track record on our team, where there is money because we raised all the money in February. In fact, at, at at a higher price than where we are right now, bringing the best funds in the world, like Franklin Templeton, Merck, Eric Sprott himself, uh, like Sprott Capital. Uh, we're being covered by Eight Capital. We'll be covered by other groups as well. And I think it's uh, it's a story that has again the asset more important than anything else, the money and the people. And last time we spoke, I think it was back in March, maybe seven or eight months ago or something like that. And I'm pretty sure at the time you weren't even on the TSX yet. Is that correct? And now you are? Yeah, we were in the process of uh, being, uh, being listed. Now we are fully listed in the Toronto Stock Exchange Venture. We're fully listed in New York in the OTC uh, QX. So it's uh, AGMRF. And we recently listed the company last week in Lima. So we're now listed in Peru, in uh, the United States, and in Canada. Awesome. All right. Well, I want to encourage everybody to uh, definitely check it out. Links are all located in the description below for that if you are interested. And uh, once again, thank you so much for taking the time again to break this down for us here at Press for Truth. Thank you so much for your time, and I appreciate uh, your viewers to follow us. Awesome. Take care. We all want truth. truth. Truth will set you free. free, free.